expert came out and began yelling at the older woman. And as that happened, my Nana coughed extremely loudly and then proceeded to glare at him. He and the woman turned and looked at me and I turned my face and looked down to the sidewalk immediately. When the owner had finally left the woman alone and went back inside, my Nana grabbed my face and turned it back towards the shop. And she said, don't ever look away. You pay attention while your attention still matters. At the time, I remember feeling pretty scared and upset that she reacted like that. I was only seven years old. I didn't really get what just happened. But looking back, I realized how important those words were to her and how important they are to me now. You see, my Nana was saying them as a Jewish woman who had fled from her home and came to America only to live in the Jewish ghetto where she still wasn't treated that well. She knew a thing or two about being ignored on the street and having people dismiss her or harass her. She knew what it was like to be treated as an unclean woman in front of people who would just turn their faces and say nothing. A few years later, we were having lunch at Panera one day, and another woman, who neither of us knew, sat down at our booth and started essentially telling us her entire life story of how she ended up on the street. Remembering what had happened with my Nana a few years prior, I made sure to keep eye contact as best I could and listen to the whole story. But then, when she eventually left our table, I turned to my Nana and I said, Nana, why did you do that? She said, why did I do what? Why did you listen to her like that? Why didn't we just move to a different table or say we had to go somewhere else or something? And I remember she put her spoon down, she looked me in the eye and she said, because we're Jewish. Said, what does that have to do with anything? And she said, it's up to us to listen to the stories that other people don't have the courage to hear. I'll never forget those words or the look on her face as she said them. I'll never forget how quickly she went from saying such profound words to sipping chicken noodle soup off of her spoon. Because that's just who she was. She was someone who listened to the uncomfortable truths that most of the world wanted to ignore. This past fall, we spent a lot of time as a community considering our place in God's story. And in the process of doing this, many of you shared your stories and listened to the stories of your peers and neighbors. So many of you told me stories about the people who raised you the friends who have supported you, the work that has sustained you, the challenges that have brought you to your knees, and the communities that have cared enough to sit with you in that hardship and then pick you back up and help you take the next step. And in thinking about today's scripture passage, I was reminded how central this task of telling and hearing stories is to who we are as Christians, and as human beings. Every week, we gather to retell stories that generations have left behind for us to hear. Many of you are involved in small groups who meet on a regular basis to share your own stories and to listen to stories of others. In fact, I'm not sure I've ever worked at a church as dedicated to stories as this one. And that's one thing that I love about this community. You all have taught me so much about stories. In today's scripture reading, we hear the story of a woman who has been bleeding for 12 years and then is healed after touching Jesus's clothing in a big crowd. Now, just to be clear, this may be a short passage, but this is a big deal. 
in her time and culture, this woman would have been labeled as unclean, as dirty, as unworthy to be seen or heard. And she likely would have been shunned by her entire community because of her suffering. This is a woman who is so low on the totem pole that the author doesn't even bother giving us her name. What we do know is that she has spent all of her money begging doctors to listen to her story and to believe her. And yet she has received no care in return. And then one day she hears that Jesus is coming to town. So she bravely leaves her home, likely for the first time in over a decade, determined to find Jesus. And then miracle of all miracles, not only does she actually find Jesus, but she has the courage to tell her story one more time to one more person. And Jesus chooses to take the time to recognize her, to hear her, and to show this entire crowd, made up mostly of the men who've totally ignored her for the past 12 years, that she matters. He shows this crowd that every person and every story deserves to be heard. No one had ever listened to her like that. Because if we're being honest, her truth wasn't an easy truth to hear. It was uncomfortable, it was awkward, it was taboo, and it was a hard story to hold. So I'm not surprised at the range of responses this woman received during her 12 years of pain. I can just imagine her seeking help from various doctors who dismiss her because they don't believe her or they think she's exaggerating, they unfairly blame her, or maybe they don't know how to fix the problem and that's just too scary or embarrassing to confront or admit. And then I think about Peter's response. He's moving so quickly through this giant crowd towards what he surely thinks is an important task. And he doesn't even notice that she's there. In fact, when Jesus insists for a second time that someone has touched him, Peter's response is essentially, yeah, dude, we're basically in a mosh pit here. Of course people are touching you. Who cares? Ignore it. Do the next thing. Peter doesn't think to take the time and figure out who's standing right next to him. I wonder how often we're like these characters. I wonder how often we're like the physicians, too skeptical or afraid of not having the right answer. So we dismiss the story. I wonder how often we're like Peter, too busy in our go, go, go mentality. So we don't even see or hear the stories. What might it look like to stop every now and then and notice those around us? What might it look like to check in with people and say, hey, how are you doing? Or what do you need? Or even, you're not alone as we sit with them in the silence. And then there's Jesus, the only person in the crowd willing to notice this woman and hear her story. When Jesus listens to her in front of an entire crowd of people, her story becomes one in which they are all accountable. They all participated in the neglect of this woman by constantly dismissing her story for 12 years. So in the hearing of this story in this moment, Jesus actually restores her to part of the community. And when I say that, I don't mean that she's restored because, she, because he heals her physical ailment and now she's acceptable. What I mean is that Jesus restores her to this community by restoring this community to her. By forcing the crowd to listen to her uncomfortable truth and hold it. He metaphorically grabs their faces and turns them towards that shop window and says, no, you don't get to look away. He restores her by telling the disciples, no, someone touched me and we need to figure out who because it matters. 
He restores her by listening without interjecting a moral lesson to be learned or a silver lining that she should really try to keep in mind during this difficult time. Does that sound familiar to anyone? This restoration happens by way of listening to a story, plain and simple. And look, y'all, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. The truth is, listening to someone's story or uncomfortable truth may not solve all the trouble, but that's okay. Our responsibility as Christians and neighbors is not to fix all the problems. We know that only Christ can truly heal the brokenness of the world and only Christ truly knows what is broken. Our job is to be a church that honors untold truths and unheard stories. We can't just be a place for the healed. We can't just be a place that welcomes those good news testimonies as much as we love to celebrate them. We need to be a church that sits in the messy spaces of life, the spaces that hold multiplicity even when we wish that they wouldn't. Because y'all, I can tell you from experience that sometimes miracles come out of the depths of those messes. When Jesus stopped to find the woman who had touched him, he showed his disciples that every person is worth recognizing. And when he stood there in the middle of the crowd and listened to this woman telling her stories on her knees in front of him, he showed the men in the crowd that she deserves to be seen and she deserves to be heard. That's our job as Christians to bear witness to stories and hold them as sacred. Like Jesus, we are called to honor the uncomfortable truths of others' experience. Because when we do that, when we say, no, I am not gonna turn away, I'm going to pay attention and I'm going to hold this story and all the mess and chaos and icky feelings that may surround it. When we say that and when we do that, that's a really big part of loving our neighbors. I think being part of church means generations coming together to hold their stories in community. So friends, don't look away. Pay attention. Hold the uncomfortable truths of the world. Tell the stories that you need to tell and love your neighbor as hard as you possibly can. Amen.